This is an 18.5 inch flat screen LED TV. It is RCA branded model DETK185R. Several of these came into my possession recently. Um, they had been discarded. Unfortunately, I didn't get the power supply brick that went with them. Now, in the back of this monitor, one of the things to take note of is this very unusual three-pin power connector. Uh, this is a very rare uh, power connector that I've never seen before. And in my other video, I show you how to replace this with a standard 5.5 millimeter connector. If you don't have the power supply brick to this monitor, um, rather than go out and pay for that very expensive power supply brick with that strange connector, I recommend replacing this with a standard 5.5 millimeter connector and getting the much less expensive standard uh, 12 volt power supply. This is a very cheaply made television set. I don't know exactly who manufactured it. Um, Cross-referencing some of the part numbers, there seems to be an association with a brand name called uh, Sankey, that's S-A-N-K-E-Y. Those TVs are usually sold in Latin America. I presume both this RCA branded set and the Sankey sets are probably made by some third party, some unknown manufacturer deep in the heart of China. Um, now, of the four that I came across, three of them had problems with the same part. We're going to open it up and have a look on the inside. Now, looking on the inside, there isn't much in here. The power supply is provided through a brick, an external brick that supplies 12 volts. And other than that, we just have a main board. And we have this thing over here. Now, this is the problem. This board here had problems with three out of the four TVs I looked at. Okay. I've seen this board here referred to as an inverter. Well, technically, it's not an inverter. An inverter takes DC voltage and it turns it into AC voltage. And you will always find those in TV sets that are backlit with fluorescent lights because you need a high voltage AC for those fluorescent lights. This is an LED TV, however. What this board does is it takes DC voltage and it boosts it up to a higher DC voltage. So it takes DC off the main board and it boosts it up to a higher voltage, and then it sends it to the LED screen through this cable. Okay, now we have the uh, set kind of hooked up to some voltage. I'm going to look at it with my ancient Tektronix oscilloscope. Got green light. So we have 12 volts going in. And we've got 35 volts going out. And this chip here produces a square wave, which on that pin looks like pin one. Kind of drives everything. We'll do it again this time with a voltmeter. Okay, input 12 volts, output, uh, call it 32 volts. There is a variant of this monitor, which is uh, externally the same, but internally different. 
It uses a different main board. It uses a different power connector, the 5.5 millimeter barrel type. The voltage booster board is also slightly different. Obviously made by the same company. Most of the parts in the same place. There's our input cable. Okay. Here's our two capacitors and there's our inductor and our transistor. Now, the driving chip here, that square wave driving chip is a smaller chip. It's a, got fewer pins on it. The connector to the output cable is located in a different place. The other board, it was located here. And on this one, it's located over here. Different, a different pin out. So uh, this, this card from ZY Global is, uh, appears in many different forms. Okay, here's our board out of the system. Now this little gem here. As best I can tell, it seems to work kind of like this. So we have we have 12 volts coming in. And that is stored and filtered on this capacitor. And uh, then we have an induction coil here. And everything is driven by this chip right here. There's a square wave coming out of that pin right there that seems to drive all of this stuff. So it drives this big old transistor, which is pulling its power through this coil. So this transistor is being switched on and off. And I think what's happening is we're getting a, a voltage spike out of that induction coil when the fields collapse. And that high voltage spike is being trapped by this diode, which is then being stored on this capacitor. And then out it goes on this cable to, to power the LEDs. I think that's what's happening here. I don't have a schematic or, or anything. I have no information either on the television set or on this board. It's really quite obscure. It was manufactured by this uh, company called ZY Global. Z-Y-G-L-O-B-A-L. And uh, not much information on it. If you search for ZY Global, all you find is their website, which is entirely in Chinese. You can't find any information at all about these specific items, about these specific uh, board or the chips on it. If we flip it over, there's their little logo right there. ZY Global. There's the specific part number for this one. This is just something that I put on there. That's just something to help me identify what this is. Um, here's the brains of the operation. This little chip here, the thing that produces that square wave that drives everything. Now it's got the ZY Global logo on it. Um, it has a few numbers on it, but you can search them. They don't match up with anything. I pre presumably that chip was made, it was a custom chip made for this company. Now, um, as I said, I had three of these with problems. Out of four monitors, three of them, this was the problem. Okay, so now one of them, this transistor was shorted. This transistor was a commonly available part. It was ME15N10-G. Easily obtainable, got it for less than a dollar. Okay, so that fixed one of them. Now the other two, the problems seem to be on this chip here. In one, the um, the chip would just sort of fail with temperature. The the square wave would start flickering, and then it would just go away. Um, in another one, the chip worked, but when you turn the power off. The square wave would not turn off. The thing kept running. So the screen stayed on even though the monitor was turned off. 
unfortunately, again, there's there's no part number here. I can't really replace it with anything. If you do need to replace one of these boards, I think what you'll have to do is search. If you search this number back here, HQ-LED2012, um, you can find some of them on eBay, secondhand ones used. That's probably the best you're going to do is, is to find a used one on eBay. Now, one thing to note about this board, I think it comes in a variety of types. Um, that is, this board was made to be used in many different televisions. You notice there's lots of connectors here for different types of connectors to the monitor. This one, the connector happens to be here, but you can see there's different connectors with different numbers of pins. So um, important to make sure the one you're getting matches up the one you've already got. Okay. The purpose of this video was to uh, point out that in this particular line of uh, inexpensive televisions branded with the RCA label that use this part here, this uh, voltage booster uh, or mis misnamed inverter, uh, the fact is this part seems to fail with a high frequency. Uh, and in particular, this chip right here. This part is made by a company called ZY Global. There's uh, virtually no information on this board or this chip. And um, of course, the easy way to test it is to, is to see if uh, you're actually getting, you know, the 32 volts coming out of here. And that voltage can be found on this pin right here of this capacitor. If you're getting 12 volts in, which is on this pin, and you're not getting 32 volts here on this pin when the thing is turned on, then this board may be your problem. The problem is that um, kind of a hard to find item. And uh, probably the best you're going to do is to find one secondhand on eBay if you're lucky. Maybe if you search through Alibaba, which can be frustrating, you might find one there. Okay, and that's it.